brought to you by Kellogg's. The folks who bring the best to you each morning. A wide choice of cereals and the forms you like best. Yours from Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now let's all play What's My Line? And now let's meet our award-winning panel of What's My Line? First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. The television show, Who Do You Trust?, has as its star a very popular young man. And we have him tonight as our guest panelist, Mr. Johnny Carson. And on my left, a most charming gal, an avid reader of Nathaniel Hawthorne. Her favorite story is A House with Two Gables, Miss Arlene Francis. <laughs> And now our publisher panelist, whose wife Phyllis is fast moving into her, his field with her beginner books. It will then be known as Mrs. Random House. But here he is now, Bennett Cerf. And here now, as usual, I introduce one of the great news analysts of the day. Of course, I won't say what kind of a panel moderator he is. John <laughs> Charles Daly. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to What's My Line. Johnny Carson, it's nice to have you with us tonight. Thank you, John. Nice to have all the regular members of the panel here looking so well. They won't look as well in about a half an hour, I'm sure. But we'll have some fun in the process anyway. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before the panel a little bit later in the program. And we'll meet our first challenger after this word. And now let's meet our first contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Joan Patty. Is that right? Is it Miss or Mrs. Patty? Yes. Miss Patty, and where are you from, Miss Patty? South Miami, Florida. South Miami, Florida. Well, now, I must say you're a great credit to the state of Florida. May I present our panel? How do you do? Miss Patty, now would you join me here, please? You know how we keep score, Miss Patty? Mm -hmm. All right, then we'll let the audience in the theater the audience at home know exactly what your line is. All right, panel, we can tell you that Miss Patty is salaried and deals in a service, and we'll begin the general questioning with uh, Dorothy Kilgallen. Miss Patty, does your beauty aid you in what you do? No. I don't think so, Miss Dorothy. One down and nine to go. Mr. Carson. Well, I don't know what her service is, but I want it. <laughs> is, this, uh, is this a service that I would be likely uh, to avail myself of? Okay. I think that's you could. I think, as Miss Patty says, you certainly could. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> good. Uh, does this have anything to do with some type of instruction? Pardon me? Some type of instruction that yeah. you might... Uh, would both men and women uh, receive your instructions? Are you yes. Equal benefit? Uh, do you perform your service out of doors? No. Oh. Two down, a date to go, Miss Francis. Um, do you take people individually for your service? Uh, small question. I knew this was coming up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sometimes it, it certainly could be uh, that way, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, do you wear anything other than what you are wearing now when you are instructing or teaching? Well, yes. Now, you, want to, you want this specifically to be... Um... Well, other than evening or dinner clothes. She does. Yes. Uh, it, is it, would it be anything less than what you are wearing now? <laughs> <laughs> Too much less. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is no. That's three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Miss Patty, then can we rule out 
anything that would have to do with the water, water sports or anything of that sort, since in that case, I presume you would be wearing less than what you're wearing now. Yes, you would, Ruben. Uh, do you, uh, we've established that you teach something, is that not correct? Yes. Do you teach adults as, uh, and children? Could you teach both adults and children? Mm, I would think we'd have no. to say no to that. Four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. Do you then just teach grown-ups? Yes. Is there anything that would be called technical about your instructions? I think that's right. Miss Patty has, has asked you what you mean exactly by technical. Would you define your... Well, I mean something quite far removed from rumble lessons or something like that. Quite far removed from mumbo... Rumba lessons. Mumba lessons. Yeah. I would agree it's quite far removed from <laughs> mumba lessons. Mumba lessons. Uh, this, this costume that you wear, Miss Patty, uh, <laughs> are your arms and legs covered by it? <laughs> <laughs> no. That's five down and five to go, Mr. Costin. And I think there's some misapprehension here. Actually, Arlene's question elicited the fact that, uh, in substance, Miss Patty wears normal street clothes or anything except dinner or evening gowns while she works. Mr. Carson? Uh, well, did she not establish that it was less than what no, she's wearing it's now? No, it's not less. Mm, but yet right. she, her legs are exposed. That's right. <laughs> um, would I like to become there again? I'm going to try that again. You know, I, uh, is there any physical action involved in what you teach? Movement. Uh, Rather than necessary movement that is, is germane to the fact of instruction or teaching. <laughs> John, John, when you talk, the words come out lying in state. I don't know. <laughs> Yes, germane to the action. Well, that would give you a nice no. big fat no, Mr. No, Carson. Sorry. That's six down and four to go, Miss Francis. Uh, do you uh, instruct people with anything to do with the voice? Do they need their voices in the work that you instruct them to do? You mean beyond the normal exchanges which might be required between no, I mean students if, and if it, <laughs> I mean if it has to do with, may I suggest the things that I mean with the voice, either language or music of some kind. Oh, that's fine. Well, that clears that up. That's seven dollars and three to go, Mr. Sir. Miss Patty, is there any paperwork connected with the kind of teaching that you do? Yes. Uh, do the people who are taking the instructions have to do some paperwork? Yes. Uh, would it have anything to do with figures? I mean, not, not a beautiful one like yours. I mean, <laughs> figures that you write on pieces of paper. It could have some relationship, Ben. It would give you a yes on it, but at the same time, uh, you know, just say it could have some relationship. Can we rule out anything to do with taxes or uh, things of that sort? Yes. Uh, can we rule out anything to do with bill collecting or bills? Yes. Uh, can I rule out arithmetic entirely? Yes. Good Lord, what's left? Uh, <laughs> um, uh, I'm being nudged for some help. May I, may I secure it from the... You may have a 30-second right conference. I just ask if there's any creative, like drawing or writing or, you know... Right. Drawing. Arlene suggests, is there anything creative about what you are teaching? You mean the instructions... Drawing is or, uh, yes. ...specifically having to do with areas of creative art? Something that would be writing, writing, writing fiction or writing articles yes. or writing advertising. Or drawing. Yes, and the answer is no. That's right. Oh, Very good, <laughs> Miss Patty, could your instruction benefit members of the armed forces? <laughs> it might, but only in the incidental sense that it could benefit almost anybody who chose to, uh, to use it. I see. Would this work be considered postgraduate work? No, I think we have to give you a no there, Dorothy. That's nine down and one to go, Mr. Carson. I take it there are not a lot of people doing what you do. Pardon me? I mean, it's, it's a rather select uh, profession. <laughs> no. Oh, I'd it's say not a there are plenty of them. Teaching has always been a very large profession. I think as our population gets larger and larger, we use more and more teachers. <laughs> I've often That's said... That's ten down and no more to go. 
what does, does she Patty do? teach? Teaches philosophy at the University, University of Michigan. Miami. At the University of Michigan? Yeah. <laughs> You're not supposed to give these things away, and I hope you'll forgive me, but Miss Patty is 23. Don't hit me now. And is now working on her doctorate, has her master's degree, began teaching at... Uh, 20. At 20 in Florida, didn't yeah. you? And is now at the University of Michigan teaching philosophy. And this is the kind of philosophy I've been looking for all my life. <laughs> Thank you very much, Miss Patty. with our next contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? A.M. <laughs> Malherbe, right? And it's the A stands for Amon. That's right. And in front of the A belongs Count, I believe. Count oh. Amon Malherbe. Where are you from, sir? Paris. From Paris, Paris. France. Mm -hmm. Very nice to have you on What's My Line, I must Very say. Nice, <laughs> and may I present our panel. And now would you uh, join me here, coming from Paris. I wonder if you know how we keep score. Well, I don't really know. But... Well, what happens uh, is very simple, actually. The panel will ask questions. Every time that you can properly give them a no answer, we flip the card. And when we have flipped the card ten times, they've lost and you've won. Mm -hmm. Which is what I'm sure will probably happen. Well. Now, let's let the audience here in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right, panel. Count Malherbe is self-employed. He deals in a product. And we'll begin the general questioning with Arlene Francis. Well, Count Malheur, is there something about your product that would interest me and I can't believe it wouldn't no matter how you answer me? Yes. <laughs> yes? Is it a product that I might have in my home? Yes. Is it a product that would ever touch me in any way? Yes. I would come in contact with? Is it something that I might put on? No. It would be interesting if you did, but we have to say no. One down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Count Malheur, in other words, this is a product that might be found in Arlene's magnificent Ritz Tower apartment, but that would not be ever on her person. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, would it be an adornment of some kind in, in a house? Would it beautify the house? No. Two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Would it be found outside the home, too? Yes. So the, hmm? Yes. In, in other words, if Arlene had one of these things, she might take it out with her when she was going somewhere? <laughs> I would say, uh, it's possible. Is this ever alive? <laughs> no, it's never alive. Three seven to go, Mr. Carson. Uh, if I had one in my home, would people come in and say, would they be impressed or say, where'd you get that thing? <laughs> I would think that we would say here that in this case, Mr. Carson, uh, because I happen to be of the male you sex, might, uh, you might gather a particular interest in the character of the product, and you would be um, interested in the product itself because of its characteristic. <laughs> Want to give me a few words about the Cuban situation, John? <laughs> uh, in other words, this would, this item uh, would be more particularly available to females. Well, I would say, I think here, it'd be fair, just as a point of information, that uh, it is to be found in the home. Its association would probably be more with the distaff sex than our really? own, although this does not rule out the possibility of its use by males, and it frequently is used by males. Does it have any moving parts? Any moving parts? No. Four down and six to go, Miss Frank. Hmm. If I had it in my home, would it ever find its way into the bedroom or the... <laughs> Everything in my home finds its way into the, the bedroom. The bedroom sooner or later, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> five, five down and five to go, Mr. Sir. Count Malheur, might this be found in either the dining room or the kitchen? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Would the dining room be its natural habitat? 
No. No. That's six down and four to go. Miss Kilgallen. Would it be more usual to find it in the kitchen? Yes. Is it ever used in the process of getting a meal? Yes. Is it indeed some type of food? No. no. Seven down and three to go, Mr. Carson. Uh, would I be correct in assuming that there's something you might use after the meal? After a meal? After the meal. No. no. That's eight down and two to go, Miss Francis. Well, is it something to, to do with improving something in the house, taking care of something in the home, the product itself? Would it, when applied to something else, better it? No. no. Nine down and one to go, Mr. Well, Sir. Might this object, this product, be found on the table when people sit down to eat? <laughs> no, I don't think so. It would be very rare if it was, because pots and pans are I not usually considered decorative pieces at the table, although there are rarer mm. circumstances, Bennett, when they are put there. Oh, know. many times you casserole put the pot, pot on the table. Pot? That... But this is not a casserole pot. May I say that these are special, non-stick, low-calorie pans that we import from France into this country. But why stick. wouldn't you put them on the table in the dining room? Well, I don't know. Last well, time I had bacon uh, and eggs in a no-stick, low-calorie pan, it wasn't stuck on the table. <laughs> it's hot, hot. <laughs> Actually, this is very interesting because uh, uh, Count Malheur has a French company, Tifal. 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 And they bring pots and pans made in America to France, and then they finish them with a... It's a plastic... Well, uh, the actual yeah. thing is we import from America the plastic, and we manufacture the finished products in France, and re-import them into America, where they are distributed right now. And I must say that as a Frenchman, I'm rather proud that they are hit with the American housewife. I take it they cost a little bit more after you've treated them than when you get them. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> the main thing is that it's, it's uh, you, you can, as I understand, you can just put eggs in, you don't have to Without grease the pan. You don't have to grease anything. You don't have to grease What's anything. What's the price range of your pots? That's well, about six, seven dollars. Mm -hmm. For a pot? Mm -hmm. Why not? Oh, sure, a good pot. If you want a good pot a to cook in, you've got yeah. to have it. <laughs> Thank you very much, Scott. It's nice to have had you on Watch My Night. <laughs> we'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment after this word from our sponsor. Now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery challenger for which the panel is always blindfolded. Blindfolds in place, panel? Yes, yes sir. John. Good. Will you enter Mystery Challenger and sign in, please? <laughs> All right, panel, as you know, in the case of our Mystery Challenger, we use the different form of questioning. One question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise, and we'll begin it with Bennett Cerf. Would you call yourself a notable addition or adornment to show business ranks? Well, I think that's a question I can answer, and answer with great conviction. Absolutely, Ms. Kilgallen. Does that mean you don't want us to hear the voice, John? No, just thought it might be a little bit difficult for our guest to modestly answer the question in it, to the degree that it should be. <coughs> Pardon me. All right. uh, are you a recording artist? Well, some, somewhat, darling, sometimes. Mr. Carson? Well, from those whistles, I knew it had to be either a beautiful girl or a lassie. <laughs> uh, sometimes. Would, I, uh, would you be more in the motion picture field than known as a vocalist? Well, sometimes I do films, too, darling. Yeah, good, good. Mr. Carson? Does that mean that you are also in the theater? Yes, sometimes that too, darling, yes. Mr. Sir? Are you starring in a very big hit musical in New York at this moment? Well, starring or being featured, may I say? Yes. Marie Albergetti? Oh! oh. <laughs> Alberghetti, who is, and I think this, this is something you'll have to agree to, who is the darling of the New York stage now. She opened in a, pro, in a, a musical called Carnival, and there are many who know much more about the theater than I ever will who say that this is the nicest thing that's happened to New York in many a year, and this is why it's so nice. 
Anna Maria. John, may I say, uh, uh, I did meet Miss Algetti at a party for Stan Freeberg the other night, and she said she was going to Hollywood on Sunday, which struck me as a most peculiar thing to say. Oh, dear, I thought I was being so smart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's why you were sticking on that one, was it? It's been a little tough to go out to Hollywood and come back. No, but I told her that I was having Saturday off, that David married. I, I talked David into giving me Saturday off. And he said, you really did? And I said, yes, and I'm going. I'll be back on Monday. The picture of David Merrick giving you Saturday I off know. struck me as rather pretty. <laughs> <laughs> well, I must say, Anna Marie, I'm sorry we didn't fool them more than we did, but it's I'm lovely. <laughs> lovely to have so much beauty grace our program. Thank, Thank you for being our guest. Nice to have you. Carnival is one of the most refreshing, wonderful musicals that's ever come to New York. Well, that's, that's what I've heard. It, was, it actually was in Washington before it came here, and the enthusiasm for Anna Maria and the show itself, uh, you know, that people talk about it in terms of My Fair Lady, which is pretty much talking. Well, panel, I think uh, you've done fairly well. This was a smash finish with Bennett, so I'll give you some, some congratulations on that. You've done well so far tonight, and we'll have another contestant after this word from our ultimate. And now let's meet our final contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Patrick? Scannell? Scannell. Scannell. Where are you from, Mr. Skinner? Uh, Astoria. Astoria? Yeah. That's out on, on, uh, on Long Island. Uh, Fine. Uh, well, these people will all be familiar to you, uh, I'm sure, but uh, let me present you, if I may. You know how we keep score, Mr. Uh, yes, Skinner? Fine. Uh, let's let the audience of the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. Mr. Scannell is salaried, and he deals in a service, and we'll begin the general questioning with uh, Johnny Carson. Well, from his appearance, you would assume he's a very distinguished attorney or lawyer, which, of course, we can throw out right away. Uh, would I be likely to avail myself of Mr. Scannell's service? Would you be likely to, <coughs> specifically? Yes. I think we would have to give him a no on that, from I what I know that's about him. Yes. yes. That's one down and nine to go, Miss Francis. Mr. Scannell, do you work with your hands in your job? Uh, yes. Um... Are your hands active on, in touching something other than just in themselves? At times. Mm -hmm. uh, is it something mechanical, Mr. Scannell? Uh, yes. Uh, do you operate something that moves? Uh, you mean moves from one place to another specifically? Well, if it moves, it has to go from one place to another, doesn't it? <laughs> I often move just a little bit, John. No, actually, if you remember some of our modern singers, they don't move from one place to another, but they sure move. <laughs> <laughs> well, does... Yes, I do mean moves... You mean does the... the moves within a certain uh, small he, orbit of some kind. Whatever he works with, does that tend to move within a small orbit? That's what I mean, John. Do you want to say no? Oh, we're going to give you a yes. You are? <laughs> yes. Good. Does it maybe move up and down? Actually, one element that you work with yes. or on does move up and down, doesn't up it? Up and down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, do you ever wear a uniform in your work, Mr. Scannell? Uh, no. That's two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Scannell, would you be associated in any way with the building trade? Uh, no. Three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Do people ever come near this mechanism that you work near? Just happen to walk by it, you mean, or something? No, for a purpose, I really meant. No, no. not specifically. Four down and six to go, Mr. Carson. Uh, does this uh, have any entertainment value, this device? No. Five down and five to go, Miss Francis. Time for one question. Do you work yeah. indoors? Yes. Uh, do you work in a place that is uh, uh, wildly important? No. 
That's ten down and no more to go because we've run out of time. Mr. Scannell shoes horses for the New York City Police Department. That's pretty important. <laughs> That's pretty important, is right. That's important indeed. Mr. Scannell, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to see you, Mr. Scannell. Now, I'm afraid I've been a little untidy and have to say good night for everybody. So for all the members of the panel, and nice to have you with us, Johnny Carson. Thank you, This John. is John Daly saying thanks for being with us on What's My Line. What's My Line is a CBS television network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Todman.